everybody. Brandon here. Going to be doing my MLB The Show 24 franchise mode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the past episodes. I did an MLB The Show 22 and 21 and 23. Bringing it back. I'm going to be doing all 30 teams. Should have had the updated rosters except for Blake Snell. Don't think he got added to the Giants yet. No, he did not. But these are the updated rosters they currently have. Going to be starting off with my favorite team. Going to be doing the NL Central first. The St. Louis Cardinals. A team that's really coming off a down year. Just was not our year, a lot of down years. The pitching was just horrible. And, you know, they added some key additions. Sonny Gray, going to be our ace. Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn. They lost Wayne Wright. They traded Flaherty. They traded Montgomery. So this is a whole new pitching rotation. I personally don't like the moves outside of Sonny Gray for the rotation. I mean, Lance Lynn was horrible last year. Hopefully he can bounce back, and he should. You know, Bush Stadium's a pitcher's park. And then Kyle Gibson, you know, a veteran guy. But the fact that he's number two on this game in the rotation is very concerning. Steven Mash just has to stay healthy. And Miles Michaelis, he's kind of a guy who, like, will have a good year, bad year, good year, bad year, good year, bad year. It's very odd how he pitches. So maybe this year is going to be a good year. He's going to pitch for us on opening day against the Dodgers. That should be fun. So with this franchise, you know, we're going to have pitching to worry about. I mean, look at their pitching depth. And a lot of these guys are under, you know, underrated in the game. I think, you know, some of these guys should be a higher overall than what they are, especially in the bullpen. Like, Kenyon Milton was our big addition. Him being a 64 overall is just insane to me. Hopefully they update that. But just look at the pitching for this team. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and pick the team and get more into it with y'all with the roster construction. If you guys hear any noise outside my window, that's like cars going by. I don't know if it's tracking noise or not. I apologize if it is. So we went to the rotation. Sonny Gray, Kyle Gibson, Stephen Matz, Miles, Michaels, Lance, and a very old rotation. There's not a lot of young pieces. There is, like, down the minor leagues, like Team Kent, they have a lot of high hopes for. Matthew Libertor hasn't really panned out. Hopefully he can turn around. Gordon Grisefo, Michael McHenry, or Michael McHenry, Michael McGreevy, Cooper, like, Takoa Roby, who we got in the Jordan Montgomery deal. Like, we got some young pitching in the minor leagues. Bullpen, though, just not it. You know, we got Guy Eagles who had a down year last year, 75 overall. JoJo Romero's really been a good addition. We trade him for Edmundo Sosa, which Sosa played, has played pretty well for the Phillies. So this has been a deal that's worked out for us, thankfully. Andrew Kittridge we traded Palacios for from the Rays. So he's coming off an injury. He's been very good in his career. I really like this pickup for the Cardinals. But other than that, Zach Thompson could be a starter eventually or a reliever. Not really sure what the Cardinals want to make him. But outside of these three, they're all 70, lower than 70 overall. And obviously, we got Ryan Helsley closing out games. Closer is not something we got to worry about. We got him for another year after this one. He's a free agent. He's going to come in a lot of money. Let's look at the lineup. Wilson Contreras. You know, I know he had his issues behind the plate last year, and they're probably not going to go away. He's not yet here, Molina. But he's going to be our catcher. Signed till 2029. So we'll have him. And then Yvonne Herrera is a guy who the Cardinals have a lot of high hopes for. I have a lot of high hopes for. I think he could be a really good backup. Kedry's only 23, so he can really get some reps and see how he develops. Goldie's our first baseman, but one thing I have a complaint about with MLB The Show is when guys get past 35 in this game, their overall is just plummet. I feel like Goldie's just going to plummet overall, which is unfortunate. He's a free agent after this year. It's going to be really interesting to see what the Cardinals decide to do with him. For me, I'm just going to see how much of his overall drops. And go from there. Luke and Baker, I mean, he's a guy we really had high hopes for. First base is really something we need to draft, probably. We don't have really anybody under 25 in our minor league system. Nolan Gorman going to be a stud. He's our second baseman. We got him until 2029. He's going to be an absolute stud for the Cardinals. And then Brennan Donovan, a utility guy, decided to keep. Nolan Arenado, we all know what he can do. Kind of had a down year last year. But like I said, the Cardinals as a team had a bad year. Can't put that on Nolan Arenado. He's a stud. Going to be a stud. And then we brought back Matt Carpenter. He's 38. Don't really expect much from him. He's just a veteran guy. He's going to drop a lot overall in this game. Third base, though, is probably a position we need to draft as well. I know we got Arenado till 2028, but we still need to get ready in case he drops an overall or starts to decline. Tommy Edmond, stud. We got him for another two seasons. So we have a lot of guys coming up on free agency eventually. Brandon, Brandon Crawford, I almost said Brandon. Brandon Crawford, it's going to be weird seeing him in a Cardinal jersey. I like the move, though. The Cardinals are an old team, but I like the move. And this is the guy they're going to rely on 
hopefully him and Jordan Walker and Nolan Gorman are going to be our three studs for the next 10 years. Hopefully Mason Wynn is going to be a stud if he can hit. And, you know, he can play some gold glove defense. You've seen some of those he's made. I really hope he can hit. He's going to keep developing. So maybe Tommy Edmonds, somebody we look to either let walk in for agency or trade eventually if Mason Wynn continues to develop. Jordan Walker, this guy's going to be a stud. We already know he's our left fielder. Then Dylan Carlson, three years of control left. Center field could be something we look to get. But they also got Victor Scott. Now, I don't know how he's going to develop an MLB the show. But, man, in real life, he's going to be a stud, it looks like, especially defensively. He could be our new Harris at Bader, but maybe be better than Bader was. So we'll have to see. Joshua Baez, another guy. Not really getting a lot of love in MLB to show. He's only 20, though. And then right field, we got Lars Newtbar. Alec Burleson, deserve, to me, deserves a little bit of a higher overall, especially when it comes to contact. I feel like he's a very good contact hitter. His numbers don't show it, but he's definitely been a good contact hitter. So that's the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm going to look through free agency. Obviously, they didn't put Blake Snow on the Giants. Shady signed with the Giants yesterday. Really like that move for them. Now, I'm going to try to keep this realistic. Now, the Cardinals do spend some money, but they don't spend a ton of money. So, I don't know if I'll, I might sign Jordan Montgomery. We'll see. I'm, I'm a big believer in bringing him back and putting him in the rotation. Just don't know if the Cardinals are going to spend that money. Bullpen, there's not a lot of options. Maybe we sign Jose Kins, Kisnero. Not really sure. But other than that, there's really not a lot of options in the bullpen. And then, you know, we got Brad Hand, and I don't really need a closer unless we make him a relief pitcher. Jonathan Scope, man, I really thought Jonathan Scope was going to have a better career than what he's had. Not that he's had a bad career, I just really thought he's going to be a guy that's like one of the best second basemen in the game. And, he, and not that he didn't have a good run, especially from 2016 to 2019, but I really thought he was going to have like better numbers throughout his career. Now he's out of the league basically right now, which is crazy. Evan Longoria. Minus, he's another guy that, like, when he first got on with the KC Royals, especially in 2018, thought, man, this guy has speed. He can get on base. He can play a good shortstop. And this injury, it's unfortunate. So don't really see anybody. I mean, we, Adam Duvall signed with the Braves. I don't think they updated that either. And Michael A. Taylor signed with the Pirates. I did pick the live roster. I just don't think it updated completely yet, so I apologize for that. So I'm going to go ahead and sim to the trade deadline. Or I'm going to go ahead and sim uh, to the regular season, see how our lineup's looking. So we got Tommy Edmond, Brendan Donovan, Paul Goldsmith, Nolan Gorman, Nolan Arenado, Jordan Walker, Lars Newbar, Wilson Contreras, and Dylan Carlson. Don't really have any gripes with this lineup. In the pitching rotation, we got Sonny Gray, Kyle Gibson, Stephen Matt. Pretty much what it's going to look like. And then we got Ryan Helsley. Okay, I, I, like, the, I like the way it's looking. A 56 overall in our bullpen probably ain't the best option, but we got to make some trades at the deadline and see how it works. Actually, I'm going to send to draft. I forgot they moved the draft closer. It was above it before anyways, but I'm going to go ahead and send to the draft. I'll let you guys know if any trades. I'm going to go ahead and do three seasons with this Cardinal team. See how this team's looking. Hopefully, we can win a World Series. So, I'll see you guys at the draft. So, here's a trade I'm thinking about making. Tyler Wells is on the trade block for the Baltimore Orioles. We need some bullpen help. Going to trade Felix Tavares. He's a right fielder, 21 years old, with deep potential for Tyler Wells. Add him to our bullpen. And, you know, you look at our bullpen. He's really the best reliever we got now. And Guy Eagles hasn't pitched too well. Joe Romero has been excellent. Uh, sorry about that. But Andrew Kittridge has been good. Zach Thompson's been horrible for us. Like, our bullpen's been solid, but we definitely need to make some moves. So, ended up making that moves. I will see you guys at the draft. The draft is getting very, very close. I put a few players on the trade block just to see how they would, you know, get trade offers for and everything. So, we ended up getting a trade offer. I was looking for relief pitching, first base, starting pitching, center field, and third base. I know you guys are thinking third base. You have no one ever not know. More for, like, depth and see if we can get any young players in return to kind of revamp our farm system at third base. But Kobe Allard, pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, Pauties, if I don't pronounce it right. 79 overall, 26 years old, only a year younger than Dylan Carlson. He's having a really good year, 10-3 and three with an ERA of 3.32 for Dylan Carlson, who's honestly having a pretty solid year. 282 average, 7 home runs, 33 RBIs. Do we give Victor Scott the opportunity? He's not playing horrible in Triple A right now. We're giving him every day at-bats. But we do have Newt Bar who's injured, so our outfield depth's already a little 
leaning it here. He's out for another one or two months. He wasn't really having a good year. We really had a down year from a lot of our hitters. We have Moises Gomez playing right field. He hasn't been very good. Alec Burleson's been playing. He's been solid. This is a tough trade because we don't really have a lot of outfield depth that's really good, but we could give Victor Scott an early opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and accept this trade because we need a young starter to really take over this team. And now we got Colby Allard, Sonny Gray comes into the team. Second, our rotation behind Sonny Gray has really struggled for us so far. But we can, you know, push Lance Lynn to the bullpen. He's already dropping an overall lot. I mean, he's not having a bad year, but it's a good deal for us. So I will see you guys at the draft. It's a good trade. So we ended up doing the MLB draft. Not sure how I did, honestly. I'm horrible at drafting players. But uh, we ended up drafting Adrian Lopez with our top pick. He's a starting pitcher. Potential 75 to 99 overall. Starting pitcher. We needed young pitching in the minor leagues. We, we need to get this rotation going. He was ranked number two on the MLB draft. So I'm pretty sure it's a good pick. Hopefully it pans out. Ended up drafting Rich Cardenas, first baseman. Goldie's already dropping a lot in overall. We got to get first base going for the future. We have really nobody under 25, so he's a 22-year-old. Solid potential. We'll see what he turns into. Avi Masterson, 21 years old, relief pitcher, 74 to 93 overall, 21 years old. So we get another relief pitcher to help out. And then we get a third baseman, David Zeller, 18 years old, so really he could develop into something. Potential is 60 to 94 overall. Derek Sellers, another relief pitcher. High potential as well. We got some good relief pitchers in this draft, it looks like. So really not a bad draft class. So I will see you guys at the trade deadline, and we'll see how we're doing and what moves we need to make to win this division. So we end up having another trade offer. Lance Lynn has really fallen out of favor in our rotation. I mean, he's been skipped by Sonny Gray. Well, Sonny Gray was above him, but Sonny Gray, Allard, Matt, Gibson, Michaelis, Libertor are all above him. And the Astros are offering us a young second baseman, which we've really been looking for. He's 23 years old. Zach DiZenzo, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. He's got good defense. The hitting might not be there, but he's going to be a solid defender. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this trade. The trade deadline's a few days away. So we are at the MLB trade deadline. We're in third place. The Reds are actually playing really good. The Brewers are playing solid. And you got the us. You got us, the Cubs, and the Pirates. So... We're still above 500, but not really where we want to be. Let's see how everybody's been performing. Tommy Edmond, solid year. 16 home runs. Really showing a lot of power. Mostly showing his career. 48 RBI. He's really having a career season for Tommy Edmond. His overall is going up, so good to see that in that leadoff spot. Nolan Gorman's having a good year as well. 33 home runs, 84 RBIs, hitting 261. Goldie, not that it's a horrible year when it comes to batting air, but the power's really down. His overall's really fell off. So first base... Just might be something we have to look at in the future. Unfortunately, it's, it sucks because I'm a huge Goldie guy, but his production's falling. Maybe we bring him back as like a platoon player, but his overall is just going to keep plummeting. So they have Matt Carpenter as the DH, and Carpenter's really not having a bad year. His overall is declining, of course, he's 38. But nine home runs, 32 RBIs hitting 280, not bad for Carp. No one Arenado, another guy having a down year. 18 home runs, only hitting 236, 55 over. He's still going to have probably a 30 home run year, but. Man, him and Goldie got to do better if we're going to make a playoff run. Jordan Walker's having a solid year. 291, 14 home runs, 54 RBI. So he's just going to continue to get better. He's only 21 years old. This guy's going to be an absolute stud. Wilson Contreras, another guy having a... Like, at the end of it, he's going to have probably around the numbers he usually has. He has 12 home runs at the trade deadline about two months to go. So he'll probably still hit 20 home runs, but the average is down. So him, Arenado, and Goldie all having kind of down years if you look at it. And then Moises Gomez, with new bar outs, getting an opportunity. He has not really made the most of it, so maybe we just need to go out and get some outfield help. And then Victor Scott hasn't really hit at the major league level either. Maybe we go out and get another temporary outfielder or something until new bar gets back because those two ain't cut. And then Brandon Donovan off the bench. Maybe we just put, maybe we just put Brandon Donovan right, but I feel like he's a better option. He's hitting 270. Moises Gomez just ain't getting the job done. Yvonne Herrera in limited games ain't having a bad year. 262 average. Brandon Crawford, obviously declining. He's having a really good year, though. 330 for the average. Three home runs, 22 ribbies. Alec Burleson, not really putting up anything amazing when it comes to numbers. So let's take a look at the pitching. Sonny Gray not having a good year at all. 9-7 and seven record. 4.78 ERA out of our ace. That is not what you want to see. 
Kyle Gibson's having a solid year. You are under four, 11 and six record. Steven Matz, another guy having a solid year. Better year than last year. Miles Michaelis having a really good year. He's going down overall, though, as well. So a lot of guys are just declining on our team. And that's the problem with this Cardinal team, having so many older players, especially when you do a franchise. It's just they're just going to keep going down when it comes to overall. And then Kobe Allard's having a solid year. Good get for us in that trade. And then Matthew Libertor has not been bad. He's really our full-time relief pitcher out of the bullpen. Like, or full-time, long relief pitcher. Andrew Kittridge, been a really good pickup, 2.60 ERA. Tyler Wells has been solid. The ERA could be a little bit better. That's really about around where his career has been. And then John King's having a really good year. His overall is going up. Guy Eagles has been solid. JoJo Romero has been lights out, which I never understood. Maybe this is just me. Maybe somebody can answer this. Why when you have two set-up pitchers, one doesn't pitch very much? He's only pitched 8.2 innings. I feel like that's been a problem for a few years in MLB The Show. Or maybe it's just me tripping. I don't know. And Ryan Helsley in that closer spot's been pretty damn good. 27 saves, only blew three of them. So it looks to me like we need to maybe get more bullpen help and another outfielder. But maybe we could just survive with Brennan Donovan. So is there anybody on the trade block that can really help us out? Would get Peter Crow Armstrong, but not sure the Cubs are going to want to trade him. He's only 22. Taiwan Walker could be somebody we get, but really don't want to take on that contract, especially when you might look for free agents when it comes to starting pitching. Could be an option right here. He's only 25, putting up good numbers. Yanoa. But we really need somebody who can help us win right now. Justin Verlander, you know, he's going to keep declining in overall as well. We don't really need any more older players on this team. Bailey Ober could be a guy we look at, a potential having a solid year, but is he really any better than the guys we got right now in this rotation? Probably not. Michael Waka, former Cardinal, having a solid year. Kenta Maeda going to keep dropping overall. Scott Barlow could be a relief pitcher we look at. He's been very solid in his career when you look at the numbers. He's having a good year this year. Free agent after the year. So there's really not a lot of big-time names on the trade block as we see so far. Like John Means could be somebody, but he's a free agent after the year as well. The rental, and then Jackson Holiday being on the trade block is just crazy. Come on, MLB the show. You guys know the Orioles would never trade Jackson Holiday, at least like not right now. I mean, let's be serious. I would pick him up, but that's just too unrealistic. Even though I would love Jackson Holiday to be a Cardinal like his dad was someday, but we'll see if that happens down the line. Tony Gosselin could be a guy we look at. He's in the minor leagues right now, not really pitching for them unless he's hurt. Just, just not a lot of options that really stand out. I mean, this is really just a bad trade block. There's, I mean, there's not really anybody that you go, man, that's going to change our whole team. And a lot of them already got traded. So Bailey Uber was somebody we were looking at. Scott Barlow, I'm going to see what they want for him. They want Kenyon Middleton and Alec Burleson. I mean, none of these trades would be too crazy. I mean, like, Kenyon Milton and Brandon Crawford would be two guys I would be willing to give up. I don't know how, to, how that's a fair trade for the Guardians, though. But maybe Alec Burleson would be more fair. Because Scott Burleson is only 31. Ain't like he's like a 36-year-old rental or anything. But we don't really have a lot of outfield depth to trade Alec Burleson, especially with new out. I mean, he's coming back in a week, so he should be back beginning of August. Moises Gomez has been pretty horrible off the bench, but we could have... Brendan Donovan play the outfield. I mean, he's having a good year. Our bullpen has been solid, though, for the people we have in the bullpen. Besides Zach Thompson, I just sent down the minor leagues. He's been good so far there. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, with this division and this weak trade block, I might just ride out the season and see where we go. So I will see you guys at the playoffs. Them to the playoffs and we end up missing by one game. Look at this standing. The Cubs end up lighting it up in the second half and end up winning the NL Central. The Reds end up finishing right above us, guessing they won the tiebreaker and end up beating us in the division. Very unfortunate. We didn't have a bad season. We just didn't have enough to make it. And Nolan Gorman led the league in home runs with 47. So let's see how everybody did before we send the playoffs and get on with the offseason.
Victor Scott really didn't light it up his first season. But he's still a rookie, so rookies are most of the time going to go through their struggles. Tommy Edmond, how about him? 24 home runs for Tommy, 75 RBIs, 282 average, solid slugging. OPS was good. A really a career high season for Tommy Edmond in most of the categories. So that's good to see. Brennan Donovan, this lineup's a little messed up, I think, because of injuries and everything. But Newbar ended up getting hurt again, so he's pretty much been out most of the season. Brennan Donovan had a really good year, though. Career high numbers for him as well. 16 home runs, 67 RBIs, 273 average. Good year for him. Nolan Gorman, what a monster season for him. I mean, 47 home runs, 120 ribbies. Hit good for average, too, which is good for Nolan. Slugging over 500. Just, like, just an MVP type season for Nolan Gorman. Nolan Arenado ended up having close year to last year. Numbers are a little bit higher besides the batting average. And RBIs are lower and home runs are lower. But, you know, Nolan's still going to put up his good numbers. Jordan Walker. Career year, which is just going to keep getting better and better. 79 overall now. Power is going up a little bit. 22 home runs, 82 RBIs at over 280. So he's doing good in every category. Wilson Contreras, about where Wilson Contreras finishes. Around 20 home runs, 60 RBIs. Average is fine. OPS, I mean, really just a typical Wilson Contreras year. Not a bad year. Goldie ended up finishing solid. 20-plus home runs. Average was good. Slugging was good. So really not a bad year for Goldie. He's still on the decline. We'll see how it looks about bringing him back. Matt Carpenter, really not going to bring him back because his overall is just going to keep going down, like I said before. But not a bad year for Carp. 13 home runs, 53 RBIs, and a limited role. Well, let's see how our bench did. Mason one got called up, only got seven at-bats. It's going to be an interesting question. Do we move Tommy Edmond to center field next year? Which I didn't even think about doing that before the season because I keep forgetting Tommy Edmond plays the outfield and the Cardinals were going to make him a center fielder. But I think it's nice and win time. We bring him up next year, let him play every day, move Tommy Edmond into the outfield, and see how that looks. Michael Ciani, another young outfielder, didn't really play a lot, went one for four. Pedro Pajes didn't really play a lot either. And Moises Gomez was not good for us at all. So let's check on the pitching. I think this is probably what went wrong for us. Sonny Gray, just a down year. And just not what we really wanted, especially when we're paying him $25 million a year. And to be our ace... We might need to go out and get some pitching. That, that's something we got to look at. Kyle Gibson didn't have a bad year, 16 and 7, but he's going to keep dropping overall. He's a free agent as well. Steven Matz, solid year. Could have been better, but at least he was healthy for the most part. Pitched 170 innings most of his career. So that's good to see. And then Miles Michaelis, good year, 12 and 8, 3.42 RA. So the Michaelis trend continues, but we got him signed for another year after this. And man, he's just going to keep dropping overall. We might need to look to, need to, look to trade Michaelis in the offseason. Kobe Allen was a good pick, a 15-7, 3.51 ERA. And then Matthew Libertor, second half just was horrible. I mean, his ERA was around fourth the trade deadline, so it was just not a good year. Andrew Kitledge, solid year. We might look to bring him back depending on the price. Tyler Wells, very good year for him as well. Pal really identical to his year last year, just less innings and less strikeouts. John King was a really good out of the bullpen. Jojo Romero had a bad second half. He was really good in the first half. Guessing that's because he pitched limited innings. Guy Eagles had a really good bounce back year. That's good to see. Got him signed for another year. Zach Thompson just couldn't get it going. ERA close to seven. Just not a very good year for Zach. And then Ryan Helsley was lights out. 44 out of 47 in save opportunities for Ryan Helsley. So... It's looking like, you know, it's going to be a pitching type off. So let's see who wins the World Series. The Phillies defeat the Twins to win the World Series. So it's, it's going to be off season. We really got to get get better pitching wise. It seems like our lineup can get the job done. We got a few guys who are due for extensions. Goldie is really the only guy in this group that's really has to extend. So I'm going to go ahead and work through free agency and show you guys the roster next season. Season is over. We're getting ready for year two. We got two more years to try to win a World Series. We revamped the rotation, added a piece of the bullpen. We didn't really do much else. This team's really not that bad besides the pitching. Sonny Gray, we kept him. He's going to be our ace. Shane Bieber, we got him for $24.5 million a year for four years. 
going to be a really good addition. Look at his year last year, 14-10, 2.93 ERA, was healthy, was durable, going to be a hell of an addition for this team. And then Walker Bueller was a free agent. And listen, we got him for a one-year deal, $6.7 million. You can't really pass it up. He had a really good year last year as well. He's only 30, 3.38 ERA. We're looking to help us out. And Colby Allard going to be our fourth starter. And then we also have Steven Matz in this rotation. Still kept Miles Michaelis, which we probably need to get rid of him. We only got him for one more year. Maybe he could be a long relief pitcher. Him and Libby both in the bullpen. And then we got Giovanni Gallegos, Jojo Romero. We ended up signing Jonathan Lewisica. He was a free agent, another guy coming off a really good year. We got him for $2.5 million. For a relief pitcher for one year, you can't beat that. So he has another good arm to our bullpen. But other than that, we really didn't add too much to this team. I mean, everything else is pretty much the same. And we probably need to go out and sign a few depth pieces. But other than that, we're good to go. Hopefully, new bar stays healthy and we have a good year. So I'll see you guys at the draft. One more to go after this one. But we drafted a pretty solid first baseman. Thomas Hughes could be ready by this franchise. Who knows? But he's only 18. So he, maybe he turns into something. We drafted Ricky Hassett, relief pitcher. Morgan Castillo, shortstop. Elvis Nunez and Miguel Horata. I think that's how you pronounce it. But we drafted really just what it was. I mean, a lot of pitching got taken early in this draft. There wasn't a lot of pitching left. And so far, our team has not hit. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I'll try to get these draft picks signed. I'll see you guys at the trade deadline. Or if any trades pop up, I'll let you guys know. Well, for the Twins want to trade us Aaron Sabato, who's a 25-year-old first baseman, from Miles Michaelis, who's really been not very good. His overall is declining. He's on an expiring contract, but it opens up some cash space maybe to make some other trades. So I'm going to go ahead and make this trade. This is a no-brainer. Michaelis has just not been very good, and the contract's not worth paying the rest of the season. So we get rid of Miles Michaelis. Line of year two. We're sitting two games below 500. Not really what I expected, but look at this division. The Pirates are only two and a half games up on us, and one and a half above the Brew Crew, and they're at 56 and 53. So this is really just continues to be a weak division. Let's see how bias performed up to this point. There's any move we need to make. Tommy Edmond, not a bad year at all. I mean, he's probably going to have a better year than he even did last year. The batting average is a little down, but still not a bad year. Brendan Donovan, not a bad year. Nine home runs, 40 RBIs, 283 average, so he's putting up around his numbers. News hitting third in the lineup, which is interesting. Not a bad year, especially since he was hurt a lot of last year. He's already played more games, so he stayed healthy. He's putting up solid numbers. Nolan Gorman's really struggled. you got to make that adjustment. 15 home runs. I mean, he's probably only going to finish with maybe 25, depending on how good of a second half he has. Got to get better production out of him. Nolan Arenado's been very good. 296 average, 17 home runs, 61 RBIs. Jordan Walker having a down year as well. Hopefully he can turn around the second half. Got to get that average and power back up. Goldie has not been good at all. Seven home runs, 233 average. This is the end of the Goldie era after this year, unfortunately. We got, if we don't win a World Series this year, we got to go all out and try to win one in the final year next year. Goldie just ain't cutting it. Wilson Contreras as well, just not getting the job done. Seven home runs at the All-Star break. I mean, I see why we're not doing very good. Our lineup is just not hitting very well. Mason Wynn's not having a bad first full-time season. Let's see how our bench is doing. Victor Scott's not been hitting at all, getting limited reps, though. He's at 198 at-bats, though. Luke and Baker's not hit at all either. Yvonne Herrera's not hitting. And David Wenzel, Wenzel, who we signed as a free agent, just a depth option. He ends up playing pretty well so far for us. So let's check out the pitching. Sonny Gray has been spectacular. 9-7, 3.19 ERA. Can't complain about that. Shane Bieber, 12-8, 2.91 ERA. Walker Buehler, not been too bad. He already still under 4, 8-6. Kobe Allard's been really good. ERA under three, nine and seven record. Steven Matt has not been great, but for a fifth starter, I'll take the innings and the ERA under five. Matthew Libertor, wow. ERA of 10 and 18 innings for Libby. Man, that, that's that's tough to look at, ERA of 10. I know it's 18 innings, but man, that's that's tough. Loisic has not lived up to the contract. You know, we're not paying him a lot of money. He's not been a good addition. Tyler Wells has been spectacular this season. 1.37 ERA. JoJo Romero has not been good at all. Zach Thompson's really bounced back. I know he's only pitched eight innings, but 1.04 ERA. Hopefully he keeps that up. Gallegos has been very good. Andrew Kittridge has not pitched very well. 
So I need to probably move him up to the middle relief pitcher so he can actually pitch. And then Ryan Helsley's been solid. 27 out of 30 save opportunities. ERA is higher than obviously last year, but it seems like the lineup is where we've really been struggling. But the thing with this lineup is where do you really look to make a move? Besides first base, do you trade Goldie? Do you try to unload Wilson Contreras to another team? Let's see what's on the trade block. I mean, our rotation's pretty set. As much as I would love to get Tyreek Skubal, I mean, we won't. I mean, I'm not saying we don't need him, but we have really three solid stars. It seems like the lineup's really just been struggling. Let's see if there's anybody out there who can really help this lineup. Brandon Nemo, really don't want to take on that contract. Luis Arias, we got Nolan Gorman at second base, unless we move him to the DH spot. Really not seeing too much that really changes our lineup. And I don't want it to be like last trade deadline either, because I know you guys saw we didn't really make much moves, but there, there's just not a lot on this trade block that really makes our lineup anywhere, unless we get a Pete Alonzo, who's really not making that much money. I mean, what what do the Rays want for Pete Alonso? Let's see. Ryan Helsley and Yvonne Herrera, Zach Thompson, Contreras, and Paul Goldsmith. Now, I would love to do this trade right here because it takes a lot of money off the cap. We get rid of Zach Thompson, who's been good, but he's replaceable. We get rid of Goldie, who's declining rapidly for a guy who's seven years younger. And we get rid of Wilson Contreras' contract, but the thing is, who takes over for Wilson Contreras behind the plate? We might have to go out and get another catcher. Yvonne Herrera's not really played well. We don't really have anybody else in the minor leagues that's really ready to be a backup catcher. But that trade is tempting because we had a big bat in our lineup. We really struggled. He's not making a lot of money. We don't have to worry about first base and free agency in the offseason. He's having a good year, 22 home runs. Might have to consider it. I mean, this, this is a deal I'm going to go ahead and do because it, it takes money off the books and it really gets us a big bat we really need because this lineup's got to start hitting. And Pete Alonzo, we all know he can hit home runs at every other game. So let's see if there's any catchers we can go out and get. Even if it's a temp, even if it's a temporary catcher we go out and get. Somebody who could split time with Yvonne Herrera and just give him an opportunity. Danny Jansen... Not really hitting a lot. Hasn't really played a lot either. He signed until 2027. 8.8 8. 8 million is not really a lot. Mitch Garver, final year of his deal would be a rental. Not really having a good year. Trying to see who would really help us. Just for a temporary catcher. Looks like Danny Jensen's really the only guy I see, unless we go out and get a young catcher like Diego Cartea. Not really seeing a lot that really just is that spectacular. I mean, it's it's looking pretty bleak. So I'm going to try to get Mitch Garver, see what they want. So they want Gallegos and Cesar Prito for Mitch Garver. Going to see if they want maybe... We don't really have a lot of, like, guys we can offer. I mean, we have a lot of outfit. Maybe Kyle Stowers, who's played solid in the minor league, and we throw in maybe a relief pitcher. See what we can get. I mean, they want a lot for Mitch Garver, it looks like. They want JoJo Romero, who's been kind of bad for us. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I wouldn't hate doing that move. It's not a really a horrible move. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do that move. I'm gonna go ahead and do Jojo Romero and Kyle Stowers for Mitch Garver. I know Jojo Romero's only 28. He had a good year last year, but he needs a change of scenery. So we're gonna see how that goes. Now with Pete Alonzo in it, also add Mitch Garver. Might regret the Jojo Romero trade, but we're gonna have to see how it works out. We gotta get some different hitters in this lineup. So we add Pete Alonzo, him, Nolan Gorman, Nolan Arenado in that lineup's gonna be killer. So we'll have to see how we play. We're sitting 54 and 56. I will see you guys at the end of the season and see how we're looking. I was really concerned that we weren't going to make the playoffs. We ended up winning division 86 and 76 record. Not the most impressive record, but this division's been weak as hell the last two years we've had this franchise. 
So let's see if this is the year we win the World Series. It's going to be tough. Let's see how everybody did before we get the playoffs started. Tommy Edmond, another good year for him. 27 home runs, 84 RBIs. Brennan Donovan had a solid year, pretty much around last year. Pete Alonso ended up stepping up big, 33 home runs, 101 ribbies for him. Nolan Gorman didn't have as good of a year as last year, but still had 27 home runs. And then Nolan Arenado, around his normal, typical numbers he puts up, 23 home runs, 87 RBIs, 274 average. His overall is starting to drop a little bit, but he's still not at that goldie stage where it's dropping dramatically. Jordan Walker, 24 home runs, ended up stepping up in the second half as well. Lars Newbar played a lot of games. Solid numbers for him. Puts up 16 home runs. Has 290. Mitch Garver with a solid pickup. Ends up putting up 17 home runs, 45 RBIs, 263 average. Then Mason Wynn, his first full season. Not very impressive, but just getting that experience. Victor Sky didn't really have a good year. Yvonne Herrera did not. Jared Young ended up getting called up. Didn't play horrible. And David Wenzel didn't play too bad for us off the bench. So our lineup ends up stepping up. And then pitching, Sonny Gray, 13-10. and 10. ERA went up a little bit, 3.69. But pitched 200 innings. He hasn't pitched 200 innings in a long... He's never... Well, no, I'm not saying never. Since 2015, he has not pitched 200 innings. So it's good to see him pitch 200 innings. Shane Bieber, hell of a pickup, 2.96 ERA, 18-11 record. 13-7 record for Walker Bueller. Solid pickup. Not as good as the year as last year, but still for a number three starter, I will take that any day of the week. Kobe Allard had another good year. He's been a solid pickup for us. I don't get how his overall is dropping when he's putting up good numbers. I see that's still a thing in MLB the show, but whatever. And then Matthew Libertor was our fifth starter instead of Mass, which is interesting. He had about equal numbers, so can't really complain about that. Tyler Wells was sensational out of the bullpen, 1.91 ERA. Drew Rahm ends up getting called up. Solid, not anything spectacular. Wyzicko was not a good pickup. ERA over five. John King, not as good a year as last year, but still not bad. Andrew Kittridge didn't pitch too much. Overall going down, don't know why. Gallegos was really, really good. Last two years, he's really stepped up after a down year in 2023. And then Ryan Helsley, 42 saves, back-to-back 40 save campaigns. His ERA still went up, but still a solid year for Ryan Helsley. So we're facing the Pittsburgh Pirates, it looks like. No, we're facing the Dodgers, I think. Yeah, the Do- no, we're in the wild card, I think. Yeah, we're facing the, the Pirates in the wild card. So that should be something here. So we're going to do quick manage and see how we do. We got home field advantage, Bush Stadium. Sonny Gray on the mound. Let's see how we do. Two-run home run by Brian Reynolds gets the Pirates to lead, and we get a double play. Let's see if we can get back on the board. We don't. Three. Nolan Gorman with a double, a walk for Arenado, ground out, and base is loaded, and we fail to score. Sonny Gray gets to the third inning, back-to-back singles. Base is loaded, we score a run, and that's all we score. Pirates again score two runs off of Sonny Gray. It's 4-1 to Pittsburgh. Mitch Mitch Keller, I almost said Mitch Gorman. Mitch Keller's having a good... Good, uh... Outing for the Pirates. Solo home run for Brennan Donovan. We're down two. Back-to-back three, singles. Three. But we fail to capitalize. Going to go ahead and make a pitching change. Going to go ahead and put in Jonathan LaWise. Gives up a home run right away to Santander, but gets out of the rest of the inning. Not looking good for us so far. Going to do another pitching change. we got three righties coming. Going to put in Kittridge, see how he does. One, two, three inning. We score a run. Now, and we tie the game thanks to Mitch Garber with a double. Going to see if Kittridge can give us another inning. He does. Tim Mays the pitching against Tommy Edmond. Now they put in Jose Hernandez. Edmond strikes out. A walk for Pete Alonzo, but we don't score. So top of the ninth inning, going to put in Gallegos. And gets out of the inning. Can we walk off? We don't. One more inning possibly for Gallegos. Good work from him. Luis Ortiz in the pitch. Garver single. Strikeout for Mason Wynn. And Tommy Edmond hits into a double play. We're going to put in Steven Matz. And he gets out of the inning. Lead off double for Brendan Donovan. Ground out, ground out, and strikeout. Man, that is tough. Lead off double. Single for Johnson. Sack bunt. 
strike out. Keep Brian Hayes strikes out. Walk for New. Strike out for Garver and a strike out for Mason Wynn. And both teams are struggling to score right now in extra innings. Ball four, take your base. No one ever not with two on, two out, doesn't score. Ball four, take your Max base. is giving us good innings. New bar hits a walk off home run, and we win game one of the playoffs. So New comes through for us there. We go to game two. Hopefully we can wrap it up here, advance. We got Shane Bieber on the mound against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Let's get this game two win. One out, two outs, single, ground out. Shane Bieber looking good so far. We got to hit and get him some run support. Looks like it might be a pitching duel right here. Johan Oviedo, former Cardinal, pitching for the Pirates. He's been very good in this game. And there's a run score. Johnson drives in the run. Nolan Arenado leadoff single. And we end up tying it up thanks Three. to Mason Wynn. Three. The young shortstop coming through. We need him. And the Pirates, thanks to Jack Sawinski, yeah. get the lead back. Shane Bieber's Three. not this bad. Gave up two runs. There's a leadoff double for Jordan yeah, Walker. Can please. New be a hero again? Yeah, There's an error. We got to score Number right here, and we is, don't. That is yeah, tough. Yeah. That is very tough Maybe right there. Seven. We got to score a run. They score another run right there, make it three to one, thanks to Key Brian Hayes. Time now, to bring in Tyler Wells. Number 68. Bottom of the eighth. We got to get some runs. One, two, three, three inning. Now, another run three. scores. Base is loaded. Got to bring in Helsley to try to save it. Or at least save us some now, more runs given up. So Dari Moreta comes in to face Arenado Walker and New Bar, bottom of the ninth, round out, fly out, single by New and a fly out. So it's a 1-1 series going back. Oh, we're going to be home again all three games, actually. So a must-win game for both sides. Walker Bueller going to be on the mound. Let's see if he can get us his W and advance us in the playoffs. Alex Man Alec Manoa on the mound. We get back-to-back -back singles, but fail to capitalize. Two-run home run for Rowdy Telez. Gets them a two another, another two-run bomb by Triello. Okay, Manoa keep us off the board. Base is loaded. We don't score. We really struggle with runners in a scoring position this series. Base is loaded again for new one-run scores. Three walks in a row and four in the inning. We end up scoring and tying the game, so Manoa gives up the lead really quickly Three. there. Three. Walker Three. Bueller, besides that first inning, is really or second inning, I should say, has been very Three. good for us in this game. Can see if he can go maybe one more inning. Ladies he does. Marco Gonzalez Ladies. in the pitch, former Cardinal. Edmund Number and Lonzo seven. both single, but we fail to capitalize. So Walker Bueller goes seven strong innings. Time to take him out, now, put in Drew Rom, see if he can get us going. Not a good start. Base is loaded. They score two runs to take the lead. John King coming in the pitch. So we got to get some runs against Ronzi Contreras here in the eighth inning. There's a double for Edmund with one away, ground out, hit by pitch, and a pop-up. So time to bring in Gallegos. Gives up another run. So this is our season on the line. Arenado, Walker, and Newbar. Fly out, strike out, and ground out. And we get eliminated by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Don't even get far again. A heartbreaker right there. We didn't hit with runners in scoring position. Let's see who wins the World Series. The Astros win it. So we have one more season to try to win the World Series. Packy Norton retires due to an injury, which is unfortunate. That's that's a tough loss to the Pirates. That's that stuff. But what can you do? You got to hit with the runners in scoring position. Some of my moves probably didn't work out either pitching wise. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the off season happen. Show you guys what free agency is looking like, and we'll get on to the final season, the World Series with this team. Three seasons in. Well, let's see some of the moves we made, and the rotation is pretty much the same. We got Shane Bieber, Sonny Gray. Walker Bueller, Kobe Allard, and Matthew Lubertor will be our fifth starter. Steven Matz is a free agent. We let him walk. We ended up signing Devin Wins. The bullpen definitely still needs some work. And at the trade deadline,
comes along and we need some relief pitching, that's definitely something we'll look to get. So we got Devin Williams on a two-year deal, $5 million a year. Comes off a really good year, 3-3-1 three, three, ERA. Gallegos, Tyler Wells. We signed Rossell Glacius and we got John Curtis in the Rule 5 draft. We'll see how he performs. So really, you know, not nothing crazy. We did sign Francisco Mejia to a one-year deal, which I was talking about him earlier, which is kind of funny. Him and Yvonne Herrera split time at catcher. P. Alonzo still at first base. Gorman, Arenado, Mason Wynn. I mean, it's pretty much the same team, just a few pitching conditions. So I'm going to go ahead and sim the draft and let you guys know how it goes. Some of you guys wanted to see. Here's who we drafted. Brock Ramos, our first pick, our first round pick. Starting pitcher, could be very good. Joe Sonningberg, a center fielder, could be very good as well. As you see, he's got 60 and 94 potential, so that could be something to look out for. And then Domingo Castro, starting pitcher, another guy with high potential. Yoannis Barney, <laughs> that's an interesting name, Yoannis Barney, 19 years old, could be something. Relief pitcher, and then we drafted Robbie Saucedo, another relief pitcher. So really went for pitching, and then we have Philip Mori, a left fielder who could also turn into something. So not the worst draft in the world. Definitely could be some guys, if we were continuing this franchise, could turn to some. At the trade deadline, very good sign, especially for the last season. 65 and 45, or six and a half up on the Pittsburgh Pirates. So let's see why we're in that number one spot. So Lars Newbar, he's been hurt a lot. Really, last season's the only year he hasn't had a major injury. But he's been playing well when he's been healthy. 299 average, slugging over 500 for Newt as well. Six home runs, 21 RBIs, getting on base a lot. That's good to see from New hoping to stay on the field. Jordan Walker's not having a bad year. 11 home runs, 46 RBIs. Still going to have another 20 home run campaign. Brendan Donovan hitting that three spot. 281 average, eight home runs, 43 RBIs. Pete Alonzo's having a monster season. Definitely probably going to hit 50 home runs. 37 home runs, 81 RBIs, 281 average. Hopefully he can keep that up and carry us to a World Series title. No one Arenado has not been good this year. Only 12 home runs. I mean, that's not very good for him. 251 average. This number is down. He's definitely on the decline for sure, it seems like. Nolan Gorman having another spectacular year. 25 home runs. Definitely going to have a better year than last year. It was not a horrible year last year, but compared to the 47 home run year, he definitely had a down year. So he'll probably hit at least 35 to 40 homers this year. Tommy Edmond. He accepted the qualifying offer, bet on himself. And listen, he's going to make some big money if this franchise was to continue. 20 home runs, 62 RBIs. 272 average. Francisco Mejia has been a solid pickup for us. 15 home runs, 46 RBIs, 302 average. And that's only for $4 million. Can't beat that. Mason Wynn, still struggling, but still only 24 years old. That's that's the main thing with him. Even in like real life, he's got to hit. And that's the thing. And hopefully he can hit because he can still be a spectacular player if he hits. And let's see how the bench has been doing. Victor Scott just can't hit. I mean, he hasn't really got a lot of at-bats either. Well, he has 331 at-bats, so he has got an opportunity. He just hasn't hit, and it's it's something that just ain't clicking for him. He's a hell of a fielder, just ain't hitting. Yvonne Herrera having a better year. It isn't playing as much with the numbers Francisco Mejia's putting up, but still a solid year. Luke and Baker's playing solid when he's gotten the opportunities. And David Wenzel, not really known as a hitter, but still playing solid. Now let's look at this pitching rotation. Shane Bieber, 14-3 and three with a 2.79 ERA. What a get he was. Walker Buehler, except for the qualifying offer as well, 5-9, and 3.39 ERA. That record does not do that ERA justice, but there's always those fans who say wins and losses don't matter. So maybe, maybe you guys are on that boat and his record don't matter. The ERA and numbers do. He's been spectacular. Lee Rator has not been good. Kobe Allard, not been good as well. And then Sonny Gray, has been very good. So really our big three, you could say, in our rotation have been very well. These two have not. So maybe we look for another starter. Christian McGowan, who we got in the Rule 5, has not been very good. Russell Iglesias has been spectacular, 2.73 ERA. John Curtis has been solid, not anything spectacular, but just giving us innings. John King has continued to be pretty solid for us, even though he's not really going to get any better or any worse. Gallegos has had a down year so far, 4.50 ERA. Devin Williams is having a bad year as well. Really expect him to kind of solidify that setup spot in the bullpen. Tyler Wells is having a really, really good year. 2.85 ERA. He's been a really good pickup. And then Ryan Helsley has 35 saves already. He's definitely going to have a 50 save campaign, especially with us winning more games. So let's see who's on the trade block. Felix Batista was on the trade block. So we have Tyreek Scoobel. Do we, do we go all out and get this guy? He's on an expiring contract. 
do we do we make it a big four in our rotation? Do we just go all in on the rotation, try to have a lights out pitching staff and just try to win the World Series that way? It, it ain't like it couldn't work. Riley Green having a really good year. You know, things with Riley Green, do we trade New? New's had trouble saying hello. Do we make a package and go get Riley Green? Jackson Holiday, I still think it's so unrealistic. He's even on the trade block. I mean, there's some interesting pieces that really could help us out on this trade block. It's definitely better than the last two have been. C.J. Abrams could be an option. You know, he's having a down year. Jonathan, and we don't really need a second baseman with Nolan Gorman. Catching, we're fine, but he has been hitting well enough to stay there. Let me see what they want for Scooble. Pete Alonzo and Nolan Arenado. Now that's whew, that, that's a big that's a big ass, but he is an ace, so I get it. Um, I mean, I, I might include Brendan Donovan. See if they're interested in him, even though he's been a big part of our team. Brendan Donovan. I mean, I, I would even consider including Mason Wynn because he hasn't really hit for us. He can move Brendan Donovan to shortstop. So I'm going to include Mason Wynn. Not including Victor Scott, I could throw in there. I don't know how much value he'll have. And they are interested in Newt Bar as well in this deal. No. None of our pitchers really get it done. That, that's the thing. I, I would include somebody. Okay, they, they won our top pick from last year, Adrian Lopez. So we would be trading Victor Scott, Mason Wynn, and Adrian Lopez. Now that's a big package, especially if you like took in how they perform in real life. That would be a monster package. I know Adrian Lopez ain't a real player, but I mean that that would put us at like an elite rotation. You put Shane Bieber, Tyrese Skubal, Sonny Gray, Walker Bueller, and Libertor or Allard, you move one of them to the bullpen. Whew, man, that that's Listen, man, that's pretty electric. I, I'm going to have to do this trade. We're trying to win a World Series. I mean, that's an electric, electric rotation. So that that's going to be, we don't, you know, we can move Brendan Donovan to shortstop. Make him our everyday shortstop. I don't know how much over his overall is going to drop. No, it went up. So there we go. Brendan Donovan's our shortstop. We call it Joshua Baez. He can be our backup outfielder. You know, he hasn't hit. And we go and fix this rotation. And move Libby to the bullpen. Hopefully he gets it together there. And boom, our, our big two right here, Shane Bieber and Scoobo, could really help us win some playoff games. So I will see you guys at the playoffs. Hopefully this is enough to win us a World Series. The division, Shane Bieber leads an ERA winning percentage and innings pitched. Pete Alonso has 54 home runs. Let's see how our team did. Let's see how the standings went. 93 wins, 69 losses. We pretty much won the division by a landslide. So let's see how everybody did, and let's get this playoffs going. So Tommy Edmund, another 20 home run campaign. His power has really developed. Even though his power in the game, 57, 59, ain't that high. He's putting up 25-plus home runs. Brennan Donovan played every day shortstop, put up solid numbers again. Lars Newbar, down year, but he only played 91 games. So he still had a solid year if he wanted to play more. Pete Alonso, a monster year. 54 home runs, 122 ribbies. Aaron not only ended up finishing with a solid year. Nolan Gorman, 36 home runs. This guy's going to be a stud, still is a stud. Jordan Walker, kind of a down year, just for a power. Not really a down year in any other category. I mean, slugging's around, obviously, 2024 was his best slugging year, but still a solid year. Mejia with 23 home runs. Wow, that's, that's like a career breakout season. What a pickup he was. Wow, I'm actually impressed by that. Davis Wenzel, I'm not sure why he's at shortstop. Maybe we have an injury. I, I don't really understand what's... We have Nolan Gorman at DH. Maybe we don't have a DH. I mean, I, I don't, I'm kind of confused about that a little bit, but... So let's check out the pitching, see how we did. Shane Bieber, electric year, 19-4, and 2.91 ERA. Just a phenomenal season. Therese Kubel, what a pick up, 17-9, and nine, ERA under three. Sonny Gray, a spectacular season, 3.31 or 3.13 ERA, 13 and 7. Walker Bueller was solid for a number four. I'll take that 8 and 10 ERA under four. And then Libby, just not very good. Going to move him back to the bullpen. Chris and McGowan was not very good. John Curtis was solid. John King, another solid year. Gallegos was solid. Not sure why his overall is dropping. Devin Williams was not good. Tyler Wells was really good ERA under three. 
And Ryan held it with 48 saves, 2.57 ERA. So it's time to get this postseason on the road. We're facing the Arizona Diamondbacks in the first round. We got to try to win this. This is our season, final season. Here we go. Can we win the World Series? Shane Let's Bieber go. pitching game one here at Three. Bush. Gets through the first inning. Three. Hopefully our offense comes through this postseason. Last season, we cannot hit. As Mayo hits a home run, gets the D-backs a one nothing lead. Christian Javier, former Astro Ball on the mound Take for the D-backs. There's a double Take for Cattell Ball Marte. Four. Walk for Gabriel Moreno. Three. Strike out right there. So single for Arenado. Three. Strike out of Nolan Gorman. Three. Three. So Shane Bieber's given up two runs, but other than that, he's been pretty good. But we just cannot hit in these these last few playoffs. We've just not been able to hit. Another run score. It's time to take him out. Let's put in Libby. Hopefully now, he gets us out of that inning. Number 52. Matthew. Liberator. Sorry, I was letting the PR announcer announce that so it didn't go over me or anything or go over my voice. So new walks. Libby gives up a two-run bomb to Corbin Carroll. Now, Let's see if John four, Curtis four, can get us rate. going. John Curtis. Now pitching for the Cardinals. Number seven, nothing John. Diamondbacks. King. Three. Another home run for Perdomo. Nine nothing D backs. Just horrible. Just not a good start to this series for us at all. This this is not been on gentlemen. the way. Your attention to that hit him. Now pitching for the card. Gallegos three Gallegos run home five. run. Gallegos. And there's a twelve nothing lead for the D backs. Just horrible right there to start off that way. I bet if you guys couldn't really hear me last game, I forgot how loud the PR announcer could be. So we got Tari School. We got to have a bounce back game. We got to stop last game. That's not how we want to play. We, we got to get back in this game. Tommy Edmond, Donovan. We just cannot score no runs. Three, ball four, take your base. Out. Three. So no runs for the D backs yet. No runs for us. There's a run right there. Gabriel Moreno Three. drives in a run. We just cannot score. There's Nolan Gorman. Gets us on the board. Solo home run. Take your base, ball four. That's the inning we needed. Three. So there's a leadoff double. Caught stealing. We needed that. There's a single. Back-to-back -back singles. Time to take Scooble out. Let's put in. McGowan gives up a run. Eduardo Rodriguez is still Three. mowing down our lineup Three. right now. Three. Man, there's another home run for Corbin Carroll. Three to one. Let's put in Three. Devin Williams. Three. Jordan Walker, Nolan Arenado, and Wenzel do up. Single. Fly Ball out. Walk. Man. Fielder's choice and a ground out. Man, that is, this is not the way we wanted. There's a double for Perdomo. It's up to our big three right now. New bar, Alonzo and Gorman. Clay Holmes, fly out. Three. Strike out. Three. And we end up getting eliminated by the Diamondbacks. And unfortunately, with my favorite team, I was not able to get the job done. It felt like in every single season, we just, we just could not get over the hump. Either we couldn't hit or we couldn't pitch or we just had horrible pitching or our hitting just fell apart. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, though. Let me know what team you guys want to see me do next in NL Central. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hopefully